Hello again. Ooh, move two. This is an interesting early start for Silent. Odd act layout, too. Hmm. Generally, it's pretty difficult for Silent to go elite heavy, although there is like this three elite path up the middle here. It's very difficult to actually make that work. Um, I do like what I see here, though. Actually, no, 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 I see the way. And then maybe fight this elite. We can actually opt out of the second elite, too. Love that we've got Guardian at the end of the act. That means as long as we get to the Act 1 boss with a good block plan, we'll be in great shape. My plan for this act, take a remove 2 start. Dunk, probably 1 strike, 1 defend. Dunk a second strike here at this shop. Dunking two strikes right out the right away can be really risky. Could run into serious trouble against Jawworm, actually, as silent with minus two strikes. Fantasia says, been struggling to get to 814 on Watcher lately. Three losses in a row, you made it to the heart easily and felt you had a great deck, but got stomped. Ah, yes. Watcher can very, very easily curb stomp everything right up to the heart and then just completely fall flat against heart. It's it's really easy to either fail to include enough block to make it through the, the first heart cycle uh, or to just draw an empty hand and get hit for 67 and die because you only have 67 health. So, things that you can do to save yourself. Uh, uh, first and foremost, you need a late game block plan. Some combination of Talk to the Hand, Mental Fortress. Um, you could maybe use Nirvanas, though I don't really recommend Nirvana or Lightwater. They work if used adequately. And ideally some way to lower the heart's damage. Specifically, Ancient Potion or Weakness Potion can make a huge difference by preventing... Uh, or Fairy in a Bottle also works really well. Now it sounds like if you're getting to the heart, you figured out how to deal damage as Watcher. So I imagine you've got that part figured out. But it's staying alive against heart that's the tricky part. Those first three turns. Definitely tricky. Not a lousy fight. Good. Very good. Which starting relic is the easiest to lose? I think defects. The cracked core is the easiest to give up. Ooh, I almost I almost did this turn wrong. Uh, we want to neutralize, strike, block, block, take zero. I was going to do strike, strike, neutralize, block, take one. That would have been wrong. All hail the dagger throw. Dagger throw, one of the most reliable damage commons for silent. Does pretty reasonable damage. Especially for an unupgraded card. And the draw one, discard one is a surprisingly useful effect. Silent has a lot of discard synergies. Things that require a discard to activate. And having a card that can just give you that can be really, really handy. Also lets you get statuses or curses out of your hand. But just as a sort of uh, entryway to taking things like Reflex, Hovering Kite. Hmm. And I think we just want to take more three combats for the first thing. Yeah, we're removing so many cards. I'd like to get a few cards added. Let's keep taking fights for the moment. Oh, beautiful draws so far. Been getting like the turn one survivors that we need. Maybe that's because I removed two cards. I think that is. Yeah. Probably. Seems likely to be true. Ha, I figured I might draw this. Dang it. Did that to myself. I could have avoided this. I shouldn't have uh, dagger throwed when I did. All right, take four.
Yeah, when, when I played the dagger throw there, I reshuffled the draw pile without my defense and my survivor, and that cost me a bit. See, these are not the attack cards I was looking for. These are more subpar early game damages. Definitely quirky quillfish. The, I, I really like the event design of Slug the Spire. They are very fun, but um, to overindulge in them will definitely set your run behind. I feel like Riddle with Holes is such a garbage card. It's pretty difficult to make Riddle with Holes good. Uh, it's it best, in my experience, with Envenom. It is one of the better Envenom synergy cards. But pro tip, the best card within Venom that Silent has, Lachette's. I'm going to skip all of these. And I think we definitely take one here, yeah. Survivor and Strike. Good old Jawworm. Bomb Kisador says the funniest riddle deck I ever saw was Wrist Blade plus Bullet Time. Think of it the bonus damage for being zero cost. I really like that Wrist Blade and Bullet Time have interactions like that. It's good stuff. Okay, we got two really good potions. I really like this start of this run. Catalyst. Oh, that is a tempting catalyst, man. Or I could just take the auto attack, which is genuinely really good. Like, we're about to go to a shop, so there's a reasonable odd of a poison card being there. This is such a game changer in the long run, but I'm gonna do two elite fights, right? It'll be. Hmm. There's no poison, we can just remove it at the shop. I like that. I like that line. Safe pick's probably auto attack. If we're fighting if we were fighting slime boss, this would be an easy auto attack. We don't have any AoE. I'm gonna grab the AoE. Immediately poison. Oh. <laughs> Technically, yes, there is a poison card here. Yep, we found one. It's a it's a catalyst. Some pretty good relics uh, gone to loss here at the shop. But because we picked the auto attack, there is no reason not to just remove the strike we came here to came here to remove. I'm not gonna buy the on sale in Venom. I can't quite afford it. In addition to removal, and we've already got good potions, so I'm out of here. Dad joke for Doom Train. How does the defect How does the defect clean up around the house? With a broom and gloom. Ooh, leg suit versus predator. That's pretty exciting. Predator is a nice damage card that draws. Meanwhile, leg sweep is premium block. Refund this man. I think because we've got really good potions, the leg sweep will serve us really well here. We'll have to upgrade the all at attack. Um, and if this is Gremlin Knob, then our potions will be used quite desperately. But if it's not Gremlin Knob, we should just stomp the elite pretty easily. Swift Pot, not as good. 
And the Lake Sweep will be really good for the Guardian fight, especially. So, and here's an example of a silent run where upgrading Neutralize is no longer something that's of interest to me. I'd rather upgrade the Leg Sweep, which will give us three more block and one more week. It's better than one more damage and one more week, for sure. Although this is a free card, this is not. But our first upgrade has to be our best damage upgrade, which is certainly the all-out attack at the moment. Oh, very early Mushroom Gang. We have a great attack for this, the auto attack, which will deal half of their health. Against the three Mushrooms, it's a, a rather difficult fight, but if we win, we'll get a special little relic in addition to other fight rewards. And that special little relic will cause us... to take reduced damage when we're vulnerable. We won't take as much extra damage from foes. All right, looks like we're gonna need some mostly block next turn. This is 14, brings it to 14. Hmm. This one is gonna attack us next turn. So I might need to Hmm. Bit tricky here. Yeah, I could use Liquid Memories all attack, kill them all right now. Absolutely no reason to do that right now. So we can full block and play the auto attack, which would mean we could do it next turn. Worst case scenario. And I'd much rather have the potion for the elite fight. I really don't want to use my Liquid Memories here and then run into a Gremlin Knob. Although we'll be better against a Gremlin Knob with the Relic from this fight, thankfully. Yeah, I think we have to play the Leg Sweep in the auto attack this turn, or at least we want to. I'd like to weaken one of the two front ones. I guess we can hedge our bet. No, I can't. Um, It's only a one in three to draw both strikes. Or, uh, sorry, two out of three to draw both strikes to kill the back one next turn. And then I could do Strike Strike Survivor. Yeah, let's plan for that. Perfect. Take one here, okay. So no potion used, only one damage taken. We get win the fight, gaining 26 bucks. The odd mushroom relic. That's an interesting first relic to get. When's the last time odd mushroom was my first relic? Not this year, I don't think that's ever happened. Interesting. Tough choice here between gamble and dash. Both of them are really good for the elites, especially. The dash is really good. This is a very good dash. But Calc Gamble is pretty hype, giving us even more discard power. Doomtrain says, isn't it only supposed to spawn after the Act Chest? No, the the special events in Act 1, um, the Dead Adventurer and the Odd Mushroom one, are Floor 7 restricted, specifically. So this is the exact earliest you can encounter them. And the chest is on floor nine. Not floor six, I think it's floor seven. I don't think six. But yeah, essentially around the time when fires and elites are first allowed to spawn is when that can uh, that can appear. The spreadsheet will know. Good old spreadsheet. 
Dash looks like two iron waves stuck together, basically, but it's only one card draw rather than two, which is part of the reason it's better than iron wave. I mean, we're going to be really good at Legavulin. Actually, are we good at Legavulin? Hmm. The damage in that fight seems a bit underwhelming. Gorilla Power, holy heck, a new channel cutie. Gets added to the list. Let me add you right now. All hail. The new channel cutie. Thanks for spending so much time into the channel as to accumulate the required half mil channel points. You are now permanently enshrined beneath the stream. Stash works with the leg sweep. Can't play them both at once. It's true. I'm going to take this gamble and I'm going to hope that we don't get punished for it. We are fighting Gremlin Knob first. We drew all of our damage turn one. The good news is we have Odd Mushroom to help in this fight. How fun. Yeah, so I can just leg sweep and strike. We take no damage this turn. Next turn, Gremlin Knob's attack is going to be pathetic. Check this out. We both take reduced damage when vulnerable, and the Gremlin Knob is dealing 25% less damage from being weakened. So this normally 24 damage attack is 17. 17. That's it. That's all he's got. Pathetic. Looks like I'm probably still going to have to use one of these. I think we just strike defend here. I could Calc Gamble, but eh, it will make him angrier. I think 15. Okay, Cutting Potion gets there. Goodbye, Sir Knob. We get an excellent reward. The Eternal Feather heals us for every five cards in the deck every time we go to a rest site. So one, two, three heals this act alone. Holy heck. And we're offered a well laid plans, a burst, or a skewer. Any discard ish deck loves a well laid plans. I mean, any deck going into Guardian loves a well laid plans, too. Dolan says, didn't know Knob applied Vulnerable. Is that a Higher Ascension thing? Uh, on Higher Ascension, Gremlin Knob will always lead with the Vulnerable attack, but Gremlin Knob does have a Vulnerable attack that they can do on any Ascension level. It's Ascension 17 that uh, alters the Gremlin Knob's AI. Or no, sorry, Ascension 18 alters the Gremlin Knob's AI. Funnily enough, this alteration to the AI is only sometimes better for the Gremlin Knob. And it can, in fact, be that a lower Ascension Gremlin Knob is more threatening against a particular draw order for the player. Dander, thanks for the Prime sub in the 36 months. I feel like we need the damage from the Skewer. I don't disagree with you in principle, but in practice... And I, I do kind of want this burst. Now, in practice, I'm going to take a Willate Plans. We're going to be a finale deck. Don't worry about it. Oh, Akabeko. First attack each combat deals eight additional damage. Makes the auto attack extra spicy. Now we could maybe think about a riddle with holes. Let's see. If I want more damage, I could upgrade Dagger Throw here. Now let's upgrade the Leg Sweep first. Could upgrade well-laid plans for Guardian, or maybe Calculated Gamble before Guardian. Could upgrade all three of these. Hmm. But... 
Not actually sure I'm meant to upgrade this uh, while late plans. Boop. Captain Cloud, Outmaneuver, and Finisher. Hmm. We do need to get a bit more damage. Of some variety. These ain't it, though. I don't think that would ever help much. Actually, we're fighting either Sentries or Legavulin, right? Eh, heck it, I'll just upgrade Wally Plans. We end up getting offered Pyramid. I don't even know if I'll care. Don't even know if I'm gonna care. I wanna use the Akabeko on the auto attack here, so I'm gonna not play any attacks turn one. Keep Survivor, Dagger Throw. Please don't discard something I really want. What did I just say? No, that's fine. Uh, I can easily solve this fight with Liquid Memories here. I think that's what I'm going to do. Ah, of course. Great potions. Truly great potions. The power. Do I ever use Smoke Bomb? Pretty rarely. Usually you don't want to lose out on the rewards from a combat, but it can be useful. They never expect the second Smoke Bomb. I can actually show off a pretty fun visual glitch with two of these. I might do that. I don't think I want these cards. Like, I'm not taking a quick slash plus. That's ridiculous. Flying knee barely makes a difference. Actually, flying knee's okay. I don't love it, but it's it's fine. I've got happy flower. I don't need flying knee. Where's my smoke bomb, he says. I want Happy Flower to give me energy on turn two for the boss fight. So let's wait one more turn here. Where's my smoke bomb? I think I might know where it is, sir. Oh, good. A real potion. And a blur? Blur seems pretty hype, actually. Block is not removed at the start of your next turn. Got some pretty fantastic block options. Hoping we get a decent damage card from uh, Guardian. I'd love a corpse explosion in particular. Let's see, is it going to be possible for us to transform this thing next turn? We need to do 27 more damage. I can do 12, 24. No, I can't. So, let's gamble. Perfect. Get blocked, you nerd. Easy. The power of blur.
This fight will probably take like 25 turns, but it'll be easy at least. Take the opportunity to sneak in damage on the defensive mode whenever we can. That way we have to go through less transform cycles overall. Uh, I think I should just blur this again. It seems like this is going to be our reliable strategy for the big hits is just block them. <laughs> just completely block them with blur. Guardian, you're adorable. It on. That's right, this boss never scales up, so as long as we can maintain a, a decent per turn output, we'll we'll overcome them. This is a truly glacial pace though. on damage for a bit. Perfect. Oh, let's get for the blur. Although, I actually think we can transform you this time. Funny how that worked out. Hello? Dawn of the 20th turn. GG. Okay, so exactly 20 turns there. That was uh, definitely longer than it needed to be, yet we didn't take one point of damage during the fight. We get offered a die, die, die for some better AoE, which I think is pretty good, but Alchemize is here to let us generate new potions, and I think that might be even better. For the third smoke bomb. I think last time I passed early alchemize, I attributed it to be to be part of the reason I lost that run. Definitely gonna add an alchemize. Fusion hammer, astrolabe, or sneko eye. Ooh. Catch me transforming and upgrading three strikes. I guess it's not the world's worst fusion hammer. Really would like some damage cards. Snekowai? Snekowai is not actually that bad either. Yeah, we'd like some cards that actually end fights. In, in particular, we're going to need a way to beat the boss of Act 2. Uh, unfortunately, unlike the boss of Act 1, the boss of Act 2 will scale. So we can't just go 20 turns against uh, Collector or Bronze Automaton. They'll kill us very quickly. Eric says, I always think of Snekowai as a make two and three cost cards cheaper. Yeah, that's kind of a good way to look at it. The extra card draw is, is also really important. Like, draw, draw to the bottom of your deck more quickly. For example, if you've got a 20... 
eight card deck with an echo form in it. You might see that echo form on turn six without Sneko Eye, but you will see it by turn four otherwise with Sneko Eye. That's a big difference too. I'm gonna transform an upgrade three here. Yeah. I don't really like the fusion hammer locking myself out of future upgrades. Like, the Eternal Feather means I'd actually prefer to go to shops, uh, to, to rest sites quite frequently to get upgrades and heals. And I'd like to get rid of these remaining starters that don't do anything. All right, well, we still don't have a, a damage plan, but we've got the block plan sorted out even further. We've got an after image plus, an escape plan plus, and an outmaneuver plus. A little bit non plus by those rewards. We are fighting Champ. That is definitely going to be a challenge. How the heck do we beat Champ with this deck? Hmm. Flechette's waiting room, right? I've got an Alchemize. Actually, Alchemize might be Champ. I'd like to hit a store. All the stores here early on. I actually don't mind elites that much. We should fight some elites. We've got enough damage to beat, like, slavers and such. Especially with the potions. So we should get relics and things that could help me beat champ. It's quite a few relics that would actually just win the champ fight for us. So yeah, let's take the more aggro path. As it were. And then we'll fight these two elites or these two elites. This locks me into the Burning Elite. I don't think a Burning Elite's a good idea. Max Health Book of Stabbing would super kill me. Just like super kill me. We never saw any good poison cards in Act 1, right? Like even if I had taken that Catalyst, we still wouldn't have a good card with it. Caltrops. Now you're talking. Definitely not afraid of Chosen here. I am not afraid. Oh, on Mushroom, I was like, how is that so low damage? I forgot we had this thing. That all-out attack is a pain in the butt. <laughs> Definitely wish it was a Dagger Spray Plus at this point. Oh, that's your big attack? What? <laughs> Such a weak Chosen. Decent number. All right, let's just uh, wait one turn here. Stop discarding my Hellot attack. Or my uh, gamble, excuse me. Please stop. That gets funnier with a paper crane. Funnier? What are you calling funny? Oh, yeah, funnier, I agree. Anything that lets us stall even better is uh, 
It's a pretty hilarious addition here. Fifty fifty to not have to use the attack potion. Oh yeah. See, y'all laugh at the 13 turn chosen fight, but we didn't take a single point of damage, so. You know? Backstab is not gonna help me against Champ, but it is gonna help me get through Act 2. So I'll take it. Wait, was that a heal, <laughs> heal hook? <laughs> I completely missed the heal hook. I didn't even see heal hook. Oh my god, heal hook. Get out of here. Who even wants a heal hook? Upgrade all defense. There's a way to stall better. <laughs> or I could remove a card. Heal honk. Hank. I actually think we want to keep... Just start removing the defense now. If we remove the defense, we'll actually draw more damage. So let's let's start getting rid of these too. Heal Hank. Like super neutralize will prevent a lot of this damage. Good. Draw three. I'll be back for that alchemize later. I don't know if I want to cycle any of these potions, though. Pretty good potions for the moment. Now, I'm not too afraid of the birds, although they're showing me reason why maybe I should be, actually. Because we can block them pretty easily. Um, and kill them quickly enough, anyway. Let's go up and over, all attack. I'm really not worried about anything that has less than 100 health. It's just not threatening enough. Who's this dupe pot? We don't have anything good to dupe right now. A lot of stuff that has an immediate impact. Yeah, like that's better than a dupe pot against uh, Grum Leader or Slavers. Just looking at more potions is also helpful. King Boo says, is Juzu Bracelet good or bad? Well, it's not good, usually. Unless you're speedrunning. Then it is genuinely good. But it's often uh, pretty underwhelming, let's say. Thing is, because fights give you money and card rewards, it's sometimes better to take a fight than it is to take an event. So Juzu Bracelet turning a, an event into a... Uh, you know, a, a combat into an event might not be a good thing. Double attack potion. Okay, we're offered the catalyst again. It's not too late to start picking up poison. Lord knows we need some kind of help. A way to beat champ. Honestly, just one deadly poison. This would be everything we need. Okay, I'm going to take this one. Rewarded? Definitely some top tier stuff in this shop. Fumes plus catalyst should be enough to kill Champ. If I buy the Nightmare, it is enough to kill Champ. I don't know if I want this Nightmare, though. 
Nightmare lets us make copies of one card. That can be enormously powerful. I'd like it with the outmaneuver, especially. The fumes and the catalyst both need an upgrade. To make that a plan. I mean, I get to go this way. Well, that's going to be fun. Because <clears throat> if I don't buy the Nightmare, I can buy, for example, Dark Shackles, which is pretty sweet. Being able to Nightmare Alchemize is very valuable. That's also true. I'm going to remove a defend. Magnetism is a win con for champ. <laughs> um, so here's the, here's the problem with that. The problem is that magnetism can make discovery. And discovery can make nightmare. And then... I don't know how many hours that's going to take, but like we, we could do the plan. With magnetism. Make infinite potions, as long as we can stall forever. So I get into a fight where I, I'm not under threat by a scaling enemy, and we we begin the waiting. Hmm. You can also buy Toolbox instead of Dark Shackles. I'm a turn one fanatic. You know what? Screw it. Let's do it. Toolbox is basically the same thing as the Dark Shackles, but better. We're offered apparitions. Mixed feelings on these. These would be better if I picked the nightmare, of course. Toolbox can be magnetism. I'm going to refuse. I want my max health. I'm, I'm really seriously considering going for the burning elite. I think I'm going to do it. It's the right play here. I know this seems like craziness right now, but trust me, by the time we get to that burning elite, we're going to be so strong. First up, Gremlin Leader. There is Discovery. Swift Strike's also, like, pretty good, actually. I'm going to take Discovery here. Discovery containeth. Um, this is not good enough, is it? Let's see what Discovery has first. Gamble. Okay, that's good. Let's actually put Outmaneuver down. Play the after image? No, because I'd rather play Fumes and Well-Aid Plans. Be back for you after image. Yeah, there we go. Fumes Willy plans. Perfect. Hmm. Well, I want to use the auto attack next turn to kill the new gremlins. Bean is okay in this fight. So it's quick slash for the draw. I want the draw here. Good. Better. Hello? problem. It's not quite lethal. A good catalyst to kill. I'm gonna gamble. We got an attack potion, worst case scenario here. Ah, that's what I thought.
Easy. Hit me. Dang. I wanted you to hit me. The sound maneuver is actually doing really good work. Alright, well that first elite fight went fantastically. Now we have a question card, meaning future card rewards, although not this one, will give us more options. That means we get um, more upgraded cards shown to us, since each card rolls for its upgrade chance independently as well as more different cards. Since you can't see two of the same card in a card reward, you're now looking at four different cards instead of three. It's a lot of reasons more options are better here. Have we really not taken a single point of damage so far in Act 2? That's really wild. And you know why? You know what the secret is to this silent deck's, su deck's success? Well, there's a lot of things, but... At its core, our starting bonus, yeah, it's because we have no strikes, not one strike. And not only no strikes, but we also have almost no defends at this point. No starter cards, period, practically. That's the power. Remember, we're head headed for the Burning Elite, though. I've assessed our power level is exceedingly high. With a boat thingy, it's even higher. Now 10 block on turn one. No question I take the... Uh... Oh, ho, ho. Actually, Panic Button's not bad either, but Panache is going to be so good in this fight. Panache first, then after image, then a skip plan. Really would like to all at attack with Akabeko, so I'm going to gamble here. Get rid of Backstab. Look for the auto attack. We don't find it. But we find some other stuff I can do. Blur, outmaneuver, alchemize, or yeah, actually, let's just attack potion here. It's a pretty good turn next turn. Two more cards to deal AoE. I could do leg sweep outmaneuver. What is the outmaneuver doing? Absolutely nothing. Don't play it. So we got what? Leg sweep blur? We can activate Panache again next turn. We're going to do 22 with all attack. We're not getting weak in this turn. So next turn we deal 22 to all plus another 20. Yeah, that ought to be good enough. We'll weaken the front guy because the back guy's dying. Get him, Panache. But I gotta play five cards. So unless the auto attack discards a Skinder's Bane, which is unlikely. I guess I could also discard with Dagger Throw. So let's not play anything before auto attack. Okay, awesome. Very lucky. Good. Even better. Exceptionally lucky. We have to use the attack potion for the final card here. Alright, well the no damage act continues. Get war paint for two random upgrades. Considering how few starter cards remain, the upgrades are likely to be of exceptional quality here. Let's see if there's a skill we want. Before we pick that up, there is a skill we want. Backflip. Draws cards and blocks. It's perfect. It's like a defend, but draw two. There's also Eviscerate, which could be pretty decent damage. And again, Heal Hook. The Heal Hook for a little bit of damage and draw. I still don't like Heal Hook very much, especially now that we're doing Catalyst Fumes. 
much rather have backflip. Oof, alchemize and blur get upgraded. That's beautiful. Hand of greed. Sure. Toolbox sometimes makes you money. That's pretty good, too. This and this. Hmm. And that's why we keep the gamble. Actually make it difficult to end of greed. We'll sort it out. Actually, no, we just need to wait one more turn. That's actually easy. Um, pretty good potions, but again, we should keep cycling, because we'd ideally like to find a ghost in a jar or something. So the more potions we look at, the higher odds that it has of occurring. Turns the happy flower, and gain 20 bucks. Beautiful. Second catalyst. Yeah. Um, and then any real poison card seals the deal. Two catalysts will kill champ for realsies. Not just like kind of kills champ, but really kills champ. Expertise and deflect both both also have some serious options here. Expertise outmaneuver is pretty powerful. But I'm going to take the second catalyst here, and we're going to keep looking for a decent poison card. Cute. Gamble or outmaneuver? Gamble. I'm not going to be able to spend all that energy next turn anyway. Okay, you can die this turn. Make it so. Double your poison to two! Now let's... Can end the fight, but the Burning Elite is our next opponent. We want to make sure we have extra energy on turn one. So if we can set Happy Flower to two here, that would be a significant improvement in our odds with what's about to come. And it looks like we can do that since we didn't play the fumes. Now we kill. Hmm. That maneuver plus. I definitely don't want two maneuvers. All right, we'll upgrade the other catalyst. This poor flower. This magic, uh, the uh, eternal feather has not been able to heal much, and it is a superpower. Book of stabbing. I was afraid it might be. Free random free skills. I kind of like that, actually. Not sure we'll use it, but I like it, conceptually. 
Decent turn for the block pot, because I can blur it, and then I can get a new potion. Don't like the speed pot as much here. Tropic Brew, that's pretty good. So we play the Chrysalis, or do we do like Outmaneuver? I think we play the Chrysalis. Let's see what happens here. Nice. That's pretty sweet. Free acrobatics, free adrenaline, free nightmare. Where Book is not going to know what hit it. Hey. I'll be making more of those. Why not Nightmare the Adrenaline? This is why. 891 reasons not to. We got a kunai! I was wondering if we might see this. Part of the reason I wanted to... That was another way we could have beaten Champ. If we hadn't found any of the poison, is get a kunai and one blade dance, and we just make it a, a 100 turn fight or whatever. I'll take another draw and block card. Back flap. I mean, we actually really struggle to gain dexterity from the kunai, but that's not what's important right now. Not even a little bit worried about the Envenom. I'm actually going to recall. I no longer have any particularly good upgrades. Hmm. Trip is cute. Four thoughts. Even more interesting. Let's give me something I can get rid of. <clears throat> so against the, the champ here, our plan is to stack Mega Poison. We put the fumes in play. And then ideally... We just kind of wait. We apply as much poison to champ as possible. Before playing the catalysts. So I'd actually like to avoid doing unnecessary damage damage to champ. I want to draw this over and over again. Um, because the more health champ has, the more turns we can stack the noxious fumes for. So I'm going to avoid playing attacks unless I can get a kunai activation out of them. Because lowering champ's health is kind of undesirable here. here, though. Yeah. And then once Champ achieves a critical mass of poison, we can play both catalysts. Multiply his poison times nine. want to do that right as he gets close to 220 health. We time it right, we should avoid champs execute entirely. Where's my Blurricade at? He's 
these outmaneuvers started to become absurd, too. Outmaneuver was a transform. We got it from the Astrolabe, but it's been really good. Like, really good. Nine energy next turn. Sure, why not? All right, 19 times 9 times 2 is enough, right? We can do it now. Yeah, that kills him. Okay. Bye. You win. Thanks for 19 months. Boop. So, was that, in fact, a perfect Act 2? I think it was. And now we're offered a Wraith form. Or Doppelganger. Wraith form definitely feels like a... A nice safety blanket. Yeah, I think Doppelganger... Doppelganger with the um, outmaneuvers is quite interesting here. Real Link. It's gonna, it says, Insane how strong you get simply by not having any curse strikes in the deck. It's crazy. Further, further evidence for... Uh, actually, some of my easiest runs of all time start with this particular Niao start. Lose max health, remove two is, is just busted good. Just busted good every time. Got such a good block game. It does feel like the Wraith form is a little redundant. Let's see what the Doppelganger can do for us. So Pyramid is here, just a little bit late. That makes Doppel a bit weirder. So is your crown, huh? I guess it's not the world's worst crown with... Uh... With question card, but... Honestly, even though we have a well-laid plans plus, I'm taking Pyramid here. Pyramid is amazing because it means full hand calculated gambles. It means outmaneuver is always good. It's going to be pretty powerful. Because somebody took the Burning Elite last act, I have full control of my pathing this act. We get to absolutely stomp everything. I'm going to remove the well-laid plans momentarily. That's right, it's all, it's all about holding the big cards and sort of maximizing our guarantees of such, of stuff. I do think we remove uh, plans over defend. Although it's not a huge margin. Might not end up removing anything. So I could easily, I don't even know to, need to go to that first shot, we'll see. There's definitely a lot of better things I could see myself, uh, spending money on at the shop. A poison potion? That might be... That might be our, our heart-killing potion? That's pretty funny. Oh, I've managed to take damage here just by uh, ordering my cards wrong. It's not going to matter in the least because we will heal, but... It's happens. Yeah, it doesn't does not matter at all. Pretty funny if it's the only damage I take all acts. I really doubt it though. I I, I don't think we're gonna get through this act perfectly. It seems pretty unlikely.
there a modifier to have only one max health? Yes, there is. Ooh. Blade Dancer Piercing Whale. I think it's Piercing Whale, but Blade Dance is pretty good with Kunai. Madnesses. This is a deck for Madnesses. Madnesses reduce the cost of a random card in our hand to zero. We've got an abundance of card draw and a relative shortage of energy. Madnesses are going to change that in our favor here. This will allow us to make a card zero cost in order to cycle back to it over and over again. Um, as well as do some other hot nonsense. So yeah, uh, when I said stuff about removing cards, what I meant was we're not removing cards. Double your fumes, double your fun. I, I think I do take a second fumes here. We just need any way to start the poison, and fumes will do. It's not the best way to do it, but it'll work. And another gamble, for sure. I'd say we're about 85, maybe 90% of the way to a victory now. Very little else that we still need. Alright, we'll throw this. I'll do it do it. find the alchemize as well as get the hand agreed so <laughs> gotta be a little ju judicious here come on man to take a little damage no we can just gamble back to it Now we have everything we need. Definitely wish I had Wraith Form instead of Doppelganger, though. Kind of feel like a chump. choice that I made. I don't think it's going to matter, though. Actually, hold on. We need to improve on this potion situation. Discard this fairy. What's in here? Ancient pot's not that good. Created life and then discarded it. Callously.
gain two energy? Two? Two energy. Yes. I would like to gain two energy, please. Remember what happened last time I played Chrysalis? Pepperidge Farm remembers. What do you got for me, Chris? Gamble and leg sweep. I'll take it. Speed potion's obscenely good for the late game. We'll probably hold on to this until Act 4. Because of the orange pellets. I should have played Blur before I did that. It's okay. Okay, actually, I take back what I said about Doppelganger. It's quite good here. Alright, now it's Catalyst time. Bad at all. First leap down, we get a gremlin horn. Card draw on energy if somebody dies. Setup plus can make something free. Gotta say, if I didn't already have two madnesses and a tactician, I would take this too. That's another way to cheat energy with the runic pyramid. But I think there's no need here. Wow, Cham, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the Koozie Zip Club. And yes, there's quite a few important upgrades that I want. This gamble, maybe one of the madnesses would be a good upgrade too. Gamble first. Second elite, Nemesis. Mm, that's not it. That's it. Hmm, hard to improve on these potions. I guess I could swap out the Dupe Pot. But Dupe Pot Catalyst is such a powerhouse. I think we keep these potions to Act 4, actually. Upon review of the footage. Whenever you see me playing the well-aid plans, it's just to avoid drawing it again. Or, just, yeah, because we couldn't gamble it away otherwise. Then we draw it. Undesirable.
energy. Two perfect elites. Now we get more energy on turn one, and we get a real upgraded reflex. Heck yeah. This card is discarded from my hand, raw three. Heck yeah. Sapphire key over strike, dummy. Joke's on you. My grandpa's deck has no strike cards. And let's upgrade one of these two madnesses. We have exactly enough money to remove a card here. Or I could buy Eviscerate. Finesse, also half decent, but I think we just remove the well laid plans now. Plans is kind of annoying. Don't really need footwork. I've got the speed potion for the the one fight where having dexterity is actually going to matter a lot. Ooh. Oh, no, no. We got dagger throw reflex. All is well. All is well. Free nightmare, by the way. Hmm. I guess I'll just nightmare this catalyst and, uh, yeah. Or do I madness and nightmare whatever gets madness? Hmm. I see. Now. Bye. Second unupgraded reflex. I don't think we want that one. The one upgraded one that we have is good enough. Begin to fall. I'm sorry, dagger throw. Can also get rid of second unupgraded fumes. But yeah, let's lose the dagger throw. It's been nice knowing you, dagger throw. You served me well. This kunai has not uh, not done a whole lot for us, has it? Make both blur and backflip free? That seems pretty good, actually. Really close to having like an almost infinite combo, actually. Block is not removed at the start of your next three turns. Gain six additional energy next turn. Okay. Sure. The power of the Blurricade. I don't think I care enough about Hand Agreed to try to over-optimize this. Yeah, it's fine, whatever. Plus one dex is great. Crippling Cloud is fine. Not really needed. I don't think I'm going to bother. Maybe good for getting 
Good for getting through artifact layers like Donu and Dekka's, maybe. Spear and Shield too. Yeah, actually, yeah. I think a way to remove two debuffs at once sounds pretty good. Let's upgrade that. Apotheosis. Not that many unupgraded cards, but there's a few. Violence. Okay, there are two attacks. <laughs> I was like, is there only one? Neutralize and uh, all attack. Guaranteed kunai on turn one. Why upgrade if the purpose is to strip artifact? Cause, I mean, because three additional poison, excuse me. Three additional poison is still very good. Is why. So it's it's being taken for artifact stripping against Donu and Dekka, Spear and Shield. It's being upgraded for extra poison against heart is the, the longer way to phrase that, I guess. Now let's take the Apo. Hmm, that turn one, though. So Madness the Catalyst, just for the block and the hand space here. A little painful. Other than that awkward open, though, we should be pretty okay here. Okay, yeah, so here, for example, we use it for artifact removal on these two. Nice. Okay. This fight's taken care of now. I'm blurring anyway. I think we go around one more time on these catalysts. Definitely poison you though. We can you as well. That should be good enough now. Use one catalyst on each of them. Probably make the easiest easiest way to win this, I imagine. Block is not removed at the start of your next four turns. Neat. Time Eater will be a little trickier. I'm not allowed to just play all the cards I want forever. Here we have to actually think a little bit about what's actually helpful. Sure would like to see my fumes. There's one. Hmm. 
There's two, but I forgot to draw my block cards. Oh, there we go. Huzzah! Piercing well this turn. Otherwise, I'm not going to block properly. Okay, I'm out of power, so I can't purge the debuff that's about to happen to me. But I can prepare for it. going to be super dead very momentarily, Time Eater. Really bad news for you. Uh, times three, times three. Yeah, you're just dead. Good. GG. Two thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room is this. Heart of the spire, the source of this beautifully efficient draw. This deck has been excellent. Excellent, excellent. Pretty much the whole way through. Now we're back to full health thanks to the Eternal Feather once more. Can upgrade one last card, I'm thinking. Probably the other fumes, just to make sure we have every iota of poison. Could also upgrade the madness. Or the doppelganger. For one extra energy. Doppel's also a bonus draw. Let's upgrade the doppel. Took this thing over Wraith form, let's let's give it some love. Alright, that hand agreed. Didn't make much of a difference. Cool. Nothing here we can afford. We have two very, very good potions. And one last chrysalis. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm going to go after image. Chrysalis outmaneuver is my turn one. What do you think? Two free piercing whales. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go, Twitch chat. This turn two is pretty spooky, but I have tons of energy. Also a calculated gamble, so... Let's again go. Spin to win. Here we are. <laughs> so let's go Piercing Whale, Crippling Cloud, yeah. Times three. Pretty good odds we kill the Spire Shield next turn. By Deadly Keta. It's turning around. Shouldn't really change the damage we take. Let's do like this. So I'd like to kill the shield before it does this maneuver.
looking good here. And very good indeed. Get a boat thingy, giving us 18 block on turn three. That's pretty exceptional for the heart. We're offered flechettes and prepared. Both pretty interesting. Prepared draw two, discard two. Very useful, I'd say. Or flechettes can do a bunch of damage. I'm going to take a prepared here. Draw two, discard two. Churin is awesome. Thanks for five months. Heck yeah. All right, we saved our best potions for the hearts. Get a free master strategy. I like that. So we're going to be duping a catalyst to quickly get to 200 poison here. If we get to... That's all we need to do to beat the heart is just get enough poison to cap the damage each turn. That's not too hard. And we'll be using this speed potion along with a power, an attack, and a skill to gain five dexterity for this whole fight as well. I might be holding on to the after image to make that happen, depending on our draws here. I'm also going to keep backstab in my hand because we have so few, um, yeah, we have, we have so few things. Okay, these are good. Crippling Cloud, Deadly Poison. That means I can actually... Oh my good lord. Look at this hand, Twitch chat. Check this out. Crippling Cloud, Deadly Poison, Catalyst, Duplication Potion, Catalyst. Boom. You're dead, son. Skill... I don't have any energy. Yeah, power attack. Can't perfect it though. Because this is always a problem. So not quite flawless, but pretty dang close. Look at that, a very decisive four turn, easy peasy. Heart fight, GG. Mr. Hearts. Hey there, if you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.